recipe for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a barbecue chili. To go alongside that, we are going to make a tart that could not be simpler. And that's actually where I'm going to start today. Now, my oven is preheated to 400 degrees. And I have a lined baking sheet. And I'm using a tart pan. Now, if you don't have a tart pan, and what a tart pan is, is a shallow dish that has the removable bottom. If you don't have one of these, a pie plate is fine. It's just these are kind of handy to have because it's easier to get the tart out. Now, this is nonstick, but I am still going to spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. If you don't have any nonstick cooking spray, you can use butter or, uh, you know, just something and then put a, maybe a little flour on there. But be sure that you do get the sides and the bottom so that you can lift it out of there. Now, I'm going to take a shortcut today, and we are just going to use... Actually, let me just put this up here first. I'm using a prepared pie crust that you buy in the dairy section of your grocery store. If you wanted to just use the frozen pie crust that's already ready, you can do that. Just make sure that you bake it a little longer than what you do if you use one of these. Now this, we are just going to put on the board. And I'm going to kind of stretch it just a little bit, um, just a little, because I want to make sure that it's flat and no creases in it. And I'm going to lay it in the tart pan. And I'm going to kind of press it down along the bottom. And then I'm going to bring it up the sides with my thumbs. I'm just going to kind of bring it up to the top of the pan, or almost to the top. You might have to stretch it just a little bit in areas, and that's perfectly fine. It's okay if it's not perfectly even. All right. I'm actually going to take my knife, and I'm going to kind of cut this side down just a little bit, because that's a little higher than the rest, a little too high. As long as it's even, that's fine. Now, you do want to take a fork and you want to poke some holes in the bottom. This is called docking. And what that does is that allows the steam to escape once the, the crust starts baking. It lets the steam rise out so you don't end up with a lot of bubbles. We want to do what's called a blind baking on this. We want to bake it for about 10 minutes. It will not be cooked through, but we're going to bring it out, let it cool, and then finish our tart. So we're going to put this on our baking sheet because the fruit filling could spill out a little later. We're going to put this in a 400-degree oven for about 10 minutes. All right? And then we'll take that out and let it cool. Now we're going to get started on our chili. I love chili. And uh, I, there are many, many ways to eat chili. Some people like it with just crackers. Some people like it with uh, cornbread. I like both of those. My favorite way is over spaghetti, but we're just going to make a barbecue chili today. And I would serve this either over um, with some cornbread or some crackers. And sometimes I like to have fries of some kind of a potato and put the chili over top of that. And that's a meal in one. So I've got a skillet here that I'm going to preheat. And I just happen to have in my freezer some ground sirloin, about a pound, pound and a half. This has no beans in it. This is just pure meat. And a little bit of ground pork, and that will add another layer of flavor and a little bit of fat because the ground sirloin is extremely lean. And let me tell you, what I do oftentimes when I buy ground meat from the grocery store. I don't need it all. And I will put what I don't use in a Ziploc bag. 
I roll it up like this, squeeze out the air, and then unroll it and lay it and press it with my hand till it's flat like that. It freezes, it stacks in your freezer to save space, but also thaws a lot quicker. So that's a little hint for you. And I do that quite often, especially if I find like ground chuck or ground sirloin on sale, I will buy it. And then even if I don't need it right then, I'll go ahead and get it if it's a good deal and freeze it in containers for recipes just like this. So I always have a little bit of ground meat, ground beef in my freezer always because I use it for so many different things. So I'm just going to kind of take my spatula. I'm going to break that up a little bit because it's you know, still cold from the freezer, but it's thawed. I took it out and let it thaw overnight. If you, can, if you don't do that, if you don't have time and yours is frozen, use your microwave to thaw it, defrost it in the microwave a little bit. That works too. Now I've just got that on kind of medium high heat. I'm going to let that brown. Now we do need an onion for our chili. So I'm gonna, I've got one medium sized onion here. And I don't know why I have that little itty bitty knife. <laughs> That's not what I want. I like a big knife to chop my onions with. Cut it in half, take off the outer layers and dice up your onion. And you know, I do the same thing with onion. Oftentimes a recipe will only need say that amount of onion and I've got this left over and I don't really need it in the next day or two, I will go ahead and dice it, put it in a small Ziploc bag, and then for recipes just like this, I've already got my onion chopped, take it straight out of the freezer and put it in your pot. Don't ever throw away like half onion or half of a bell pepper or something. Chop it up and put it in the freezer and then you've got ready to go on your busy days. Your chopping's already done. I have all kinds of little bits in my freezer. I have bell pepper, half of a bell pepper chop, onions chop, different things. Tomato paste, if I buy a, a can of tomato paste and I don't use it all, because most of the time you won't use the whole can, put it in little like tablespoon size servings on wax paper, cover it over with another layer of wax paper and then just pop it in a Ziploc freezer bag Put it in your freezer and then just cut off one of the little squares as you need it. There's all kinds of little hints to stretch your food dollars. So we've got a, a pepper, I mean an onion here. A little bit of a skin there. We're just gonna brown this up. I love chili. And this is one of those recipes. You could brown off your meats and put them in your crock pot, put the rest of the ingredients in your crock pot Put it on low all day and you've got dinner ready when you get home. And many times, there's another little time saver for you. I do grocery shopping usually once a week. And I, as you know, you've heard me say many times before, I'm a meal planner. So I sit down typically Sunday afternoon after we've had our mid-lunch, midday lunch. I sit down and I get my calendar out and I plan the whole next week's meals based on whatever our schedules are for that week because I've got four people in my home that go four different directions. So, you know, some days, you know, Aaron may have a ball game that night and I'm like, okay, I gotta have something quick, gotta have it ready. It's gotta be, you know, full of carbohydrates for him so he has energy, he plays basketball. Or, you know, Austin has bass lessons, he takes bass lessons and I'm, I'm like, okay, gotta have something quick for him to eat before he goes to his lesson. So those are things that you think about. And I will do a lot of my chopping and prepping when I get home from the grocery store. Well, if I want to make a meal like this, but I don't have time in the mornings to brown off my beef before I put it in the crock pot, I will go ahead on Sunday afternoon and brown up the meat mixture and maybe even the onions in there and put it in a container in the refrigerator. And then the morning I want to fix it, I just dump it all in my crock pot and there you go. There are many, many ways to save your time so where you can cook at home. On most days, even your busiest day, there are ways to do it. You just sometimes have to get creative and spend a little time maybe on a weekend. Now I'm just browning this up 
If you don't want to add the pork, you don't have to. I just think it adds a little bit of a different layer of flavor. And again, if you don't want to use beef, you could use ground turkey or ground chicken. If you want to use ground turkey or chicken in this recipe, it's delicious. I've done it with it. But make sure that you add a little bit of either like a canola oil or a um, vegetable oil of some sort to brown your meat in because there is no fat really in ground chicken or ground turkey. And you want to have that little bit of fat for flavor, but it also helps to bloom the other ingredients, as you've heard me say many, many times. You need those, that oil to bloom the flavors. And in this case, we're doing chili powder and you will need that. I'm gonna add my onions at this point and let those soften up. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm getting over something in my throat and chest, some kind of flu, cold bug. So my voice is a little raspy. If I clear my throat a lot today, that would be why. All right, we're just gonna let this brown up. I'm not gonna do anything else. I'm gonna take a quick break. When I come back, we'll get the chili simmering, we'll get the topping ready for the tart, and our crust should about be ready. So I'm gonna take a quick break, and when I come back, we'll finish this up. I'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back. Our meat has browned. Our tart shell is out of the oven. And you see, because we, we took the fork and we pricked the bottom of the thing, just got one little tiny bubble and that's perfectly fine. Really is necessary to do that. Now, remember our golden rule with spices and herbs. You always, always add them before you put your liquid in. I'm adding some chili powder. This is just a commercial blend of chili powder. A couple of teaspoons, a little over maybe, that's all right. Just however much you like. And then I wanna add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, a teaspoon of salt, maybe half a teaspoon of just black pepper. Stir that in, and this is where the fat that comes off of the meat comes into play. Because, especially the chili powder, is oil soluble, the oils, the fats, that come out of the meat cause the flavors. I've got steam going everywhere here. Cause the flavors of the chili powder to bloom or any other kind of spice. It really does make a difference. Now, the basis of that is done. We're gonna add about three tablespoons or so of Worcestershire sauce. If you don't have the Worcestershire, you can use soy sauce. It's called umami flavor. It's that fifth flavor that people, you know, sweet, sour kind of thing. And then we're gonna add about half a cup or so of whatever your favorite barbecue sauce is. And a couple of cans of fire roasted crushed tomatoes. I love the fire roasted tomatoes in chili. It just is delicious. Now I'm going to put that down on low and at this point if you want to put it in a crock pot you go right ahead put it in your crock pot. You want to let it simmer. The longer it simmers the better it will be. So we are just going to stir that all together and let that simmer for a while. Mmm, smells so good. Cover it up and let it just simmer. Make sure you put it down on like low and let it go. Now, we're gonna make our topping. I'm gonna add, this is something I do all the time. 
I prep my stuff ahead of time, so all I have to do is dump my ingredients. That's some oats. This is some chopped walnuts. I've got a little bit of butter here that I, a couple tablespoons or so. I'm going to cut it into little cubes. All right, dump, dump that in there, kind of spread them out. We're making a crumble topping. You can do this in the food processor if you want. I just do it with my hands. You'll see in just a second. And I need a little bit of flour to make our crumb topping. About half a cup or so of flour. Stir that together. to get all of that coated. And then what I like to do is take my fingers and get those pieces of butter and kind of take my fingers and kind of smush them. Technical term there, smush them. What that does is that just creates smaller pieces of butter to distribute over the top of the tart and that makes it a little easier. You could take your knife if you wanted to dice your butter finer. I find it's just as easy to do this if not a little easier. This is a great job for your kids too. If you've got children in the kitchen, they wanna help. They love getting their hands in stuff like this. So let them do this. Teach them to wash their hands and get right in there and smush it. Tell them, say smush that butter. All righty. Now, that's good. Now, you can use either plums peaches or nectarines for this tart. This just so happens to be nectarines. Um, I like nectarines. I don't like to peel mine. If you want to peel yours, go right ahead. What I do is cut around. These are not going to be free stones. So I'm gonna cut it in half and then take my pieces. Wow, we're sticking. All right, little nectarine, you gotta let go of your fruit here. Cut it in half, twist it. Usually it twists right off. Today is not going to be that day. We're gonna be picky, come on. Slice in there, there we go. And cut them about, you know, quarter inch or so. The first one is the hardest. Once you get one, this particular nectarine is just not wanting to cooperate with me. There we go. What I like to do is just get down in there, keep your slices about the same width. Cut down to the pit and then twist it off. You'll need a couple of pounds of these. My mother loved nectarines. So I always think of her when I make a tart like this, because she loved these things. You're gonna need about two pounds or so. All right, once you get that first one out, the rest go pretty simply. It's that first one that's, for these particular nectarines are being difficult. All righty, now, I'm gonna take another break. All I'm gonna do is just peel or not peel, but slice up these nectarines. When I come back, our tart shell should be cooled because you want it to be a little cooled. We'll lay our tart, our uh, fruit in there, get our topping on and get this in the oven. And our chili will be about done. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. And when I come back, we'll get this tart ready and get it in the oven. So I'll be back in just a minute.
what I'm doing is just laying the nectarine pieces in a decorative pattern, in a circular pattern around the edges. And it just makes it prettier when you do that. Okay, just however you, if you wanna just pile them in there, pile them in there, it's okay. It will taste the same. I just think it looks prettier when you do this. A nectarine, in case you don't know, is a cross between a peach and a plum. So it's the best of both worlds. This is absolutely delicious with fresh peaches in the summertime when they're juicy. The only thing I would do with peaches a little differently if you wanna use fresh juicy peaches is maybe take your peaches and coat them with a little bit of flour, just a tiny bit before you do this because they will exude so much juice. You know, peaches can be very juicy, which is why they're so good. All right, come on you. Let's get you in here. Don't be contrary. I talk to my food a lot. I find it helps. My kids laugh at me and they say, Mom, you're talking to yourself. And I'm like, nope, I'm thinking out loud. I'm not really talking to myself. I think out loud. And I do do that a lot. I don't know if you do that a lot, but I really do. I really do that a lot. I think out loud. I find it helps to accomplish whatever it is I'm trying to do if I talk my way through it. And then just however you can get them on the inside is fine. You'll need about, I don't know, three or four good size pieces of fruit for this. The rest, if you don't use, just, you know, I would coat them with a little bit of lemon Keep them from turning and put them in the refrigerator and use them as a snack. That's good too. Okay, now what we're gonna do is take our mixture and sprinkle it all across the top of our tart. Okay? Mm. This is kind of a cross between a tart and a crumble. We make, I make fruit crumbles quite often. You could add a little tiny bit of cinnamon to this if you wanted to, would be good. Or a little bit of uh, nutmeg would be good, either one. And then you wanna take that, put it in the center of your 400 degree oven and it needs to bake for about 40 to 45 minutes. So I'm just gonna pop this in the oven. Check our chili, it's simmering away. Let these things simmer, and when I come back, everything will be done, and the best part, we will get to eat. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Now, welcome back. Now, if you want to, and I do, if you want to about five minutes before your tart is done, you can sprinkle some coconut over top. And the reason that you don't wanna put that in the beginning is it would burn, but five minutes is the perfect amount of time to kinda of lightly toast that coconut. You could also sprinkle the top with cinnamon or pumpkin pie spice, apple pie spice, something that warm spice, you can do that if you want to also. Our chili is done. I have turned it off. And oh, look at that, how good. Now, serve that alongside some uh, cornbread or some crackers or some, serve it over a baked potato or even fries if you wanted to, like some french fries. Some kind of potato, you could sprinkle the top with cheese or sour cream if you want. I myself 
kind of a purist when it comes to chili. I like it like that. I don't want sour cream on it. I don't want cheese on it. I know a lot of people do like cheese on their chili. I'm just not one of those people. But our tart should be done. So let's go check it. Let's see. Yep, see we sprinkled coconut on the top and it's had just enough time to where the tips get a little bit brown. You could leave it a little longer if you wanted to. I don't want to because I personally like my coconut not quite as toasted as some people, but there you go. Now that needs to cool. That is very, 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 very hot. And then what you can do, oops, making a mess here. I would take it out of the pan and set it on something to cool. The reason is this has a lot of heat on it and if you leave it on there, the crust will continue to bake. So what I like to do is just take it off the pan and set it on a rack or something to let it cool down. That is why I put it in a lined baking sheet because if you did not do that, all of that would be stuck on your pan and you would have a lot of scrubbing to do which I don't want to do. After that cools with a tart pan, you can just take it, you know, right, let it cool just a minute so you can handle it, but the tart bottom will lift right off and go on a cake pedestal or, you know, anything that you want it to. But that is a delicious, easy to do tart that you could make, let it cool. If you don't want to sprinkle the top with the crumble mix or the coconut or any of that, what you can do 